Hey, what's up you guys? So today I'm gonna to be doing something a little bit differently. I am going to be showing you how to build this mid-range gaming PC step by step so you can follow along at home. And I'm gonna show you how you can win this exact PC for free at the end of the video. So stay tuned and let's get right into it. To start it off, I'm gonna show you all the tools that you're going to need to build a gaming PC. So from left to right here, first up we have clippers or wire cutters. These are going to be essential for the cable management portion. To cut off the excess, it's kind of only used for that purpose, but I would still highly recommend getting them. Next up, we need a PH1 Phillips screwdriver. This is a smaller one, and this is basically just for M.2 screws. So if you have a multi screwdriver with a smaller bit in it, that'd work too preferably magnetic. We have a box cutter. You want to make sure when opening all these boxes that you don't tear them in case you have to ship them back. So you wanna open it up as clean as possible in case there's something wrong with the part. Now we're going to need this for the standoffs. This is three by 16 and it is like a little socket screwdriver. And of course you're going to need a normal Phillips screwdriver here. Uh, this is a LTT ratchet screwdriver. This is not sponsored by the way. We just love Linus's screwdriver. We have so many of them. We have like over 10 in the office at this point. And it has every bit that you're going to need. And the magnetic tips are extremely good. You want a nice strong magnetic tip. So when you do, when you have the PC flat and are trying to screw things in, they're not falling into the PC and getting lost. So this is pretty much everything you're going to need. The first step is going to be safely opening all the boxes. Again, trying not to tear it. So using the box cutter and cleanly opening the motherboard, the CPU, the RAM, and the storage to start it off. Now it's not a bad idea at this point to check all of the ports and make sure there's no bent pins in the motherboard or nothing broken. And then the next step, you are going to use the box cutter to open the CPU and you're going to see a box like this. This box has the CPU in it and the cooler that we're going to need later, but right now we're just going to need the CPU. And be careful when taking the cooler out because there is pre-applied thermal paste. So you do not want to touch the bottom. So we're going to take the CPU and once you open this shell, you're going to want to grab it on the sides. Don't touch the bottom. And we're going to push down this lever releasing the socket here and then we're going to take our cpu and you will see it's usually on the bottom left but there will be either a dot or a triangle some indication on where you need to orientate the cpu it'll also be a matching one on the socket so i know this is the right placement here for the cpu so you're going to gently place not push the CPU into the socket. It will just rest in there, no clicking. And then you close it back up. You might need to push it down just a little bit to get the lever on there. And then this will pop off. At this point, you have successfully installed a CPU. We can now install the cooler. Now, if you have a tower cooler, I do have a couple of videos for that as well that I'll link down below that you can refer to before this specific mid-range slash budget build we just use the stock intel cooler because it works pretty well now these intel ones are a little bit finicky there are four holes around the cpu you want to rest this on the four holes before pushing down right there and you want this cord to be in the top right so it's easier to get out of the way so it's just resting here you don't want to push these down yet so one hand goes on the cooler. You're going to push one down, push the other down, and this isn't fully in yet. So you're gonna have to apply some force until you hear a pretty audible click on all of them. And I'm gonna show you how to check that all of them are in place after this, so bear with me. All right, once you've heard a click on all four, you are going to Place one hand and gently kind of wiggle it. Make sure it's not obviously loose. All right, next, that is the hardest part of the motherboard. The rest just click right into place. The next, we're going to do the RAM. All right, next up, we're going to be doing the RAM. Now you're going to count out the slots and we're gonna call this one two. You're gonna open two and then open four. The RAM can only go one way. Make sure you line up the notch on the motherboard with the notch in the RAM and push down on both sides so you hear an audible click. And the other one will just follow with that. 
Now we just gotta install the storage. So we are going to use this top port under the armor. And this is where the PH1 comes in. This has two screws. Keep these to the side. And then we are going to take our drive, insert it on the one side and push. You wanna make sure you do hear a click. It's okay if the sticker is upside down. And then we are going to take that armor because this will go back over it. We wanna make sure we peel and then line up on the standoffs. And then we are going to put the screws back on. We have finished setting up the motherboard. So let's move on to the next step. So the next thing you wanna do is take your box cutter and unbox the PC case. All right, so there's a few things that we wanna to do to prep the case. One of those being taking off the side panel, both side panels. So usually the screws can be unscrewed by hand. If not, that's what we'll use the Phillip for. And then we are going to take the panel and put it back in the box. So it's got a safe place to chill while we're building. Now you're gonna take the screws and put them back on here so we don't lose them. Cause trust me, uh, we've done that before. And then you're going to do that to the other side as well. Take off the side and put the screws back on. We're going to need the little hardware it comes with. Usually it's in the bottom basement. This one comes in a nice little box here. And we are going to be looking for the standoffs. We are trying to make sure there is enough standoffs in the case for our motherboard. Usually those will come in a smaller bag here with like screws and stuff. So we are looking for, I might just need to put a picture up cause I don't know if I can get this tiny thing to focus. But yeah, we're looking for the standoffs. So once we find them, we're going to lay the PC flat and we are going to count the holes on the motherboard and make sure there's a standoff for each one of those holes. The motherboard has three here on the left, three here in the middle, and then two here on the right. So I see three here on the left, three in the middle. We're going to need to add the two to the right. And that's what we use this for. I usually like to put it in first and then guide it and screw. Now I can tell, I believe with this motherboard, I need to move this one down one, which you can kind of line up your motherboard and see if you need that to do that as well. So now when you put the motherboard in, you wanna make sure all of the holes have a standoff, which it looks like it does. And then that's when you know we're ready to screw. But this is what the motherboard screws look like. They're also in that hardware kit. And this is where a magnetic tip screwdriver is going to be crucial so you don't keep dropping them in. So I usually like to start with the middle one here and that just helps it line all the other holes into place. And you're going to rinse and repeat for all of them. So to avoid boring you on that, meet me at the next step. Good news is we basically assembled everything and the last stuff, things that we have to do are cable and cable management. So we are going to go one at a time and it might seem daunting because there's a lot of cables, but a good amount of these we won't even need. Well, these we will, but for the motherboard we won't. And it's a lot easier than it might look. So what you wanna first do is any bread ties that are even remotely close to the computer need to be removed immediately because they are annoying and gross and we're going to throw them away. It doesn't really matter what order you start in, as long as you go one at a time and each time you plug in a cable, make sure it's not tangled up. Just make sure everything is loose and that helps with cable management down the line too. Which this PC actually came with some zip ties, but I'd recommend getting some thicker ones as well. So this is the USB three and almost every motherboard is going to have it. Couple different spots though. This one happens to be right here. These are a little fragile. So we're going to feed it through. It doesn't really matter which hole you put it in. You can do it the bottom one, whatever you think will look better. I think the top will look better because the 24 pin connector will also be going through here. So it'll kind of mix together. And this can only go one way. There's a notch on it. It'll, li it'll line up with the notch here, but you wanna make sure it's going in straight and then wiggle with just a little pressure until you hear a click. If you just start shoving it in there, those pins can very easily be built. So that is one thing down. So when you're doing cable management, you wanna look out for these little hooks that are on the case. This one doesn't have them here and we don't want it to really see through this hole. So I'm going to deal with this one later and we're just going to continue plugging in. This one right here is for the USB-C to power the USB-C here on the front of the case. Now, 
Some other boards don't have this, but this one is right here under it. Now we can run it through this top one too, just to have all the cables running in the same spot. And then this one, I'm pretty sure it goes in either way. Yep, it just clicks right in. So now all that we have left for the case, the HD audio and then the front panel, we'll do the HD audio next. Now this is usually always in the bottom left of the motherboard. The motherboard's going to have it labeled. So you'll see, I'll, I'll try to zoom in here, but it'll be kind of hard to see. On the bottom, it'll have written out HD audio. Now this can only go in one way. You'll see there's one spot where there's not a hole and it'll match up on the motherboard. Push it in, there won't be a click on this one and then we're good. Now next up is the front panel. For this motherboard, or for this case, it looks like it is only giving us the essentials here. The power switch in the plus and minus power LED. I am going to have a chart pop up here on screen that will show you exactly how it's supposed to go. But just like the HD audio, if you flip over, it will say F panel or front panel, or it might just say panel next to the spot where it's supposed to go. Usually it's somewhere in the bottom right. It looks like this one is all the way here in the bottom right. So we're just going to feed it over or feed it under, I mean. So it's gonna go plus, minus, and then power switch. Now this one doesn't look like it has a reset switch or the power LED because that is actually, the LED switch is right here. So we have now plugged in all the things for the case. Now we're going to install the power supply and plug in those and then we're just about done. So I forgot to show the power supply at the beginning of the video, but we are going to open this up and this is not modular. So it's gonna have all the cables just connected and most of them we're not going to need. So it's gonna look overwhelming and it's gonna look like we have so many cables and things to plug in, but we really don't. We really only have like two or three. So when we open it, we wanna make sure we take the power cable and put that in the box. And when installing the power supply, you wanna go fan facing down on this case and just slide it right in. We can even take off this bread tie. It might be hard after. Where the clippers might come in handy. Be careful not to clip the cables. And then we slide it right in here. And there are four screw holes, which your power supply comes with the right screws you need. So it helps if you hold it into place because it wants to slide around and you screw all four screws. So now we are left with this huge bundle of cables, but I'm going to show you the ones we are going to need one at a time. And this particular power supply doesn't have, like it has all this extra. So it actually helps to go one at a time too, just like what we did with the case. And I might even take a zip tie just to keep all the cables together. So this is going to be fed right where we fed all the other ones, flip it. And this only goes one way, there is a hook that goes with the notch, which is usually on the right side. And this takes a little bit of pressure up and down, making sure it's all the way in. And now that one's in. Now I'm going to do my best, because again, there's no hooks here, so it's kind of annoying. I wish there's a hook here, just to keep it out of the way of those holes. So I'm going to cable manage all those together. Now it's like one bundle. And use the clippers. And any excess, which there'll be a lot of, you can kind of just tuck in the basement to get out of the way. But so far, we're really just trying to get this out of the way as much as possible without interfering with the hub here. This case is a little bit more annoying, so we'll see what to do about that in a second. But next up, you're going to get a cable that says CPU on it. We are going to flip over, and there is the CPU port always in the top left here. And this will require some patience because it is very tight in there, so you have to line it up correctly. The hook on the lip, and I'll show you what's going on here. And then you want to apply pressure like the last one. You should hear a click and then pull the access. Now this actually has some hooks on the right side. So that makes cable management a little bit easier. All right, so now we're really trying to get this cable to go on the right side and then we will do the one right below it. All right, so we are almost done here. We will need two more cables, I believe, out of all this cable mess, which is this. This is a SATA cable, and it is going to be used to power this hub right here. And you'll see that it can only go in one way, and then you could just connect it. So that gives power to the hub here. And now we're going to need to take this one and plug this into the motherboard. 
and you see we have a lot of length here to work with and it should say like led or argb something like that and this one actually has a missing hole here as well so it can only go one way also on the hub the little fan hub there was another header or there was another plug to plug into the header right below what we plugged into on the fan the main fan the cpu fan so i just plugged that in right under it and that'll be the last part for that so the last cable we're going to need is one that says pcie now this is for the gpu so we're going to check the gpu and see if we need one of these or two of these so I have pulled out the GPU here and it is fresh out the box. So you wanna make sure you remove all of the like protective adhesive and all the film before plugging it in. Now what we're looking for is the PCIe ports here and that is right here. So it looks like we only need one eight pin connector. Sometimes there'll be two, but for this we need one. And then we also need to remove all the packaging. So now our GPU is ready to install and you want to do it in the top port. This motherboard only has one, usually it's right underneath the NVMe slots. And we will just kind of line it up just to see where exactly it's gonna go. Because on the side of the case here, we're gonna have to figure out what lanes it's gonna go in, which it looks like it's these bottom or these middle two. And see, yeah, it looks like the middle two. So you know, once you do that, you remove these middle two protectors. Now these are ones that you pop out. So be careful not to bend and break the actual case, but you actually need to physically break off these things. Just wiggle it back and forth and it just kind of rips off. Now you take the GPU and you slot it in and apply pressure evenly until you hear a click. Now you see it's in the right spot here. We'll close this, tighten it, and now we use a screw or two to lock it into place here on the side but be careful not to tighten it too much because that will actually make the gpu go up making the ports not accessible all right so now that the gpu is in we just need to plug in the port and then we are basically done then we just got to clean up so unfortunately this case doesn't have a little hole cut out to make it really clean so i think i'm gonna go out here to the side we'll see how that works so you kind of sneak through the basement here and then we pull around line it up and push yeah this should stay out of the way that looks all right now if you want it to look even better we can take a zip tie do this and you're good to go and a cool feature of this case is this front glass panel actually pops off as well to give it a nice full aesthetic here if you want to take pictures or anything like that so i have shoved the rest of the cables in the basement and put on the side panel you can't really see the cable through here I might go through and try to make that a little bit better, but we need to do the moment of truth and see if this actually powers on. So far so good. It looks like all the fans have working RGB. They're all spinning, that's spinning. These look good. I think we did it. So you made it to the end of the video and as promised, I am going to explain to you all of the details on this giveaway and how you can win this exact same PC that you saw in the video. So the PC is also going to be signed by Matt and Jackson, which you see right here. They are signing the back of it. This giveaway is going to take place in November and it's going to take place after our normal giveaway that we do with the Toasty Bros every second Tuesday of the month on their Twitch stream. So there will be two chances to win a free gaming pc in the month of november here this second one is a sweepstakes and there is no purchase necessary to enter it is completely free to enter and win some more details here the giveaway is only open to residents of the united states 18 years and older and there are two ways to enter here you can enter by purchasing things from our website and you have to use a valid email address and phone number so any purchase it does not have to be a gaming pc will enter you in the raffle for the month but the second entry option is a mail-in entry completely free you will handwrite your name phone number and email address on a plain three by five card and mail it in to this address here at the bottom and that will also enter you in as well so injuries will be accepted november 1st through the 30th cut off there at midnight do the sweepstakes now we've, we've already gotten three letters in the mail really? yep so you better you all better hear your odds are getting lower a winner will be selected december 1st and will notify by email all the emails given within five days so you'll know if you won the pc or not 
and it will have all the normal love and care of a normal PC Bros PC that we ship out. So it'll be shipped really nice, have Windows installed and all that good stuff. So you can just plug and play your new PC around the holidays. So don't miss out. We have never tried a sweepstakes before, but we're excited to see how this works out. This will be a double giveaway month. So make sure you spread the word. We may or may not do it again. We'll see how this one goes. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.